Hi, my name is Rami Nagel, and this is a three-part series on curing tooth decay. It is store food that has given us store teeth. The primary cause of tooth decay is not bacteria, but a deficiency in nutrients. Just as an important disclaimer, I'm not a dentist, and I'm not a medical doctor. I do not sell treatments for tooth decay. I came to begin researching tooth decay because at the age of one my daughter's teeth began to decay. And the reason why this was a problem is because there is not a good treatment available for tooth decay for children. And meanwhile, I was watching my daughter's teeth decay. I didn't know what to do about it. I was afraid that she'd get a tooth infection and there just wasn't a solution. A dentist is a doctor of dental surgery. What, they, what a dentist does is treat the symptom of your tooth decay and ignore the cause of the tooth decay. So when you go to a dentist, you're not getting the problem cured, you're getting the problem treated. This uh, series is going to talk about curing tooth decay, not treating tooth decay. The current theory of tooth decay that we've been told is not really the full truth. It's a half-truth at best, and it's more likely a false truth. So on the ADA website, if you look at the cause of tooth decay, it says tooth decay occurs when foods containing carbohydrates, like sugars and starches, such as milk, pop, raisins, cakes and candy, are frequently left on the teeth. Bacteria in our mouth thrive on these foods, producing acids as a result. Over a period of time, these acids destroy tooth enamel, resulting in tooth decay. Sounds pretty reasonable, that is until you look a little more carefully at what this theory is really telling us. Now, on the Sugar Association's website, it talks about one of the important purposes of white sugar, and it says, sugar incapacitates any microorganisms by its ability to attract water. What that means is that if you put sugar on your teeth, a bacteria cannot eat that sugar because the bacteria will become incapacitated by the sugar. In fact, the two primary foods that cause tooth decay, white flour and white sugar, have been designed by Im industry and commerce to prevent bacteria from eating them because they didn't want those foods to spoil. So this leaves us with a dilemma. How is it that a food designed specifically to prevent bacteria from eating the food, how is it that bacteria eat that food in our mouth? Another aspect promoted about tooth decay is saying that tooth decay is an infectious disease. However, if tooth decay was an infectious disease, it has a lot of curious properties. For example, uh, you don't get over it. You don't develop antibodies to the infectious disease. They don't behave like a cold or a flu. It doesn't behave like what we would think uh, infectious disease would behave like. When tooth decay is active in our bodies, we have in our mouth a large amount of a bacteria called Lactobacillus acidophilus. Now Lactobacillus acidophilus, that's in yogurt. That's the bacteria that's in our gut. We need, it's a probiotic bacteria, we need to be healthy. Now strangely, uh, in order to prevent tooth decay, nobody tells you avoid lactobacillus, avoid yogurt, avoid fermented foods. Nobody is recommending that. So it seems a little curious that these bacteria could actually cause tooth decay when in the rest of our body they are probiotic. What Wesson Price did is he traveled all over the world and did field studies. Because he saw that people who lived on their native diet sometimes had a 100% immunity to tooth decay. And he comments on the current theory of bacteria causing tooth decay by saying that among the difficulties in applying this interpretation is the physical impossibility of keeping teeth bacteria, bacteriologically clean in the environment of the mouth. Another difficulty is the fact that many primitive races have their teeth smeared with starchy foods almost constantly and make no effort whatsoever to clean their teeth. In spite of this, they have no tooth decay. So if you and I are to believe the bacterial theory of tooth decay, 
then it doesn't make sense that people would li be living on the planet that have starch all over their teeth, never brush their teeth, and would be immune to tooth decay. If the bacterial theory was true, then these people would have significant tooth decay because they have food on their teeth all the time and they don't brush. In fact, this doesn't happen. So what does that mean about the current theory? The current theory is false. What you've been told is a lie. A more accurate definition would be odontoporosis, which means a decrease in tooth density causing tooth weakness, and odontoclasia, which is the absorption and destruction of tooth enamel, dentin, and tooth tissue. I'd like to tell you, uh, give you an example of what a normal dentist does when you get to go to get treated for tooth decay. Let's say I leave this lemon out for a couple of days. It'll get moldy. And you go to the dentist, and the dentist, this is like a tooth. And the dentist looks at your tooth, and he says, oh, there's a moldy spot, there's decay. I'll take care of it for you, don't worry. He takes his drill, cuts a hole. There's a nice hole there. Takes some filling material. Fills it up. Color it, make sure that it looks good. All right, and he says, look, I've cured your tooth decay. So after you cut the moldy spot out of the lemon, it's not decaying anymore. But you leave the lemon out for a couple more weeks. In the case with our teeth, it usually takes a couple more years. And lo and behold, there's another moldy spot. A couple years go by, you don't have much of a tooth left. And then it says, wow, this mold, just like in the lemon, it's, it's penetrated to the core of the lemon. I'm going to have to uh, do a root canal. Cut off the top. Remove all the pulp, fill it with glue, put a cover back on, you now have a pulpless tooth, and they say, look, I have cured your tooth decay. You don't have to worry about this tooth anymore, it will never decay again. And of course it won't decay again because it's dead. And when the tooth is dead, it can become a breeding ground for harmful bacteria. So, Root canals can be dangerous. Not everyone's root canal becomes infected, but a lot of root canals can become affected, infected. So it's actually quite a harmful treatment. If you want to read more about Dr. Mining's work, then he wrote a book called The Root Canal Cover-Up. There's a great need to prevent a root canal rather than to have a root canal. And the only sane way to do that is with proper nutrition. Another thing some dentists promote is fluoride treatments. Fluoride is poisonous, and I don't want you to be drinking fluoridated, fluoridated water or use fluoride treatments. Fluoride does not confer immunity to tooth decay, and fluoride is not an essential vitamin and mineral. The Environmental Protection Agency's own employees union, consisting of approximately 1,500 scientists, lawyers, and engineers, came out against water fluoridation because a lack of scientific literature, scientific documentation showing that fluoride exposure is too high in fluoridated water, a lack of benefit to dental health, and the health hazards from ingestion of fluoride. Several large studies have been done in fluoridated water communities, and these studies have shown that over a period of time, fluoride does not increase immunity to de tooth decay, and in fact, might decrease immunity to tooth decay. For more information on the harms of fluoride, I suggest you go to the Fluoride Action Network. While dental treatments temporarily stop the presence of decay, they are not a cure. Fluoride is a poison. It is not a cure for tooth decay either. Tooth decay happens when we diverge from nature's fundamental laws. In part two of this video series, I will show you the evidence of Weston Price that shows us how our bodies degenerate by a certain type of incorrect nutrition. And in part three of this series, I'm going to show you what proper nutrition is and give you a protocol for reversing, halting, and preventing tooth decay. I also encourage you to go to my website, yourreturn.org, and click on Healing Teeth. I have both a free resource of information that I presented to you, and I'm also selling an ebook to help give you a very clear and precise and detailed explanation of why Keith Decay